So welcome to Lesson 9 of Harnessing Learning Potential. I'm Kathy Johnson of Pyramid of Potential. At this time, as I go over the Pyramid of Potential, we've talked about the base of the Pyramid of mind and body health. Up from there, we talked about the first year of life, neurodevelopment, and the primitive reflexes. Above from there, we were talking about sensory development and motor development. Next the thing we're talking about is cognitive development. You see, in order to really be working on cognitive skills, we've got to have the brain, the sensory system, and the body set up so that we can be working on these skills. For example, one of the skills I'm talking about is memory, and two types of memory are auditory and visual, but we can't be improving the visual memory, for example, if we don't process visual information well. And in order to process visual information well, well, we've got to target that, but we also have to develop the ability, which is through the primitive reflexes in the neural development. And occasionally, that isn't going to work unless there's been work done on the mind and body health. So, once all these things are set up, we can be working on cognitive skills. Now, there are many types of cognitive skills. So, let's go through a whole bunch of them. First is phonemic awareness. Uh, next, memory. Then, I mentioned a couple there. Uh, there's also long-term, short-term. But the most important kind of memory for learning is actually working memory. We'll be spending a lot of time on this in future videos. Uh, we also have um, the, the skill of visualization, being able to visually remember and process and turn information in our, in our brains. Uh, processing speed, so important. We'll be talking about that. Each of these has their own video. Uh, there's also logic and reasoning, okay, the ability to understand our world and uh, be able to use that information and, and apply that information. And then finally, a really important one is attention. You know, ADHD, ADD has a lot of attention from everybody uh, all the time. So we're going to spend a lot of time on attention as well. There are many kinds of attention. There's visual attention, auditory attention, uh, there's sustained attention, being able to pay attention for a long period of time. And there's also divided attention, being able to divide our attention between two activities at the same time. And an example there is taking notes. You have to listen to the instructor while you're also writing. Typical brain training uh, is when I'm working one-on-one -on -one with a student. Now, this is where so much work happens. By the way, it won't work well if we haven't worked on the other things uh, first that are in the pyramid of potential. Believe me, I've tried. So, um, we'll spend an hour a day, five days a week, for 12 weeks working on these cognitive skills. A typical day would be spending um, that hour doing six different activities. If the activities are too easy, we're not improving the brain because the connections are already there. If the activities are so hard that they're frustrated and crying and shutting down, that's not going to work either because they, their brain is shutting down. It's not improving. So we have to work at a level that is somewhere between easy and really frustrating. And in here is challenging. So during this, this hour, we're maybe playing six different activities and games, a lot of them games. And we're doing this at a challenging level that's fun. And uh, so and when we get into these further videos later, I'll give you examples for each of those cognitive skills. So we do this for an extended period of time. Uh, because it takes a lot of time to create new connections in the brain. Uh, once we've finished that brain training and we've improved their memory and their attention and their processing speed and their logic, we've done all these things, then 
it's time to go back and do academic tutoring. Because after all, they, they now can learn to read, to write, to do math. So we've got to fill in the blanks that haven't been filled in before. And the last thing to do is study skills. And because, after all, they didn't learn those to begin with. So that's the overview for cognitive training.